So hello, am I am I audible now? Rupesh ji, good evening. Am I audible? Am I audible now? Hello. Great. So I'm getting uh, getting information that both the visual as well as the audio seems to be working. So it's just about a couple of minutes past six. I think almost good time for today's sessions to start. So Namaskar and good evening, everyone. So today's uh, session, Understanding Uttarakhand Series Episode 5 by being there, doing that on this Facebook group. The topic that was given in the poster is the design and architecture in Uttarakhand. <laughs> what I would like to add to that, that it will be a short peek into the vernacular architecture of Uttarakhand. The reason why I say that it's a uh, small peep is simply because uh, Uttarakhand is a large area and it has uh, many different kinds of regions and whatever little I could see I did find that there were quite a few uh, uh, differences that were there and until and unless one goes into the details of each and every bit and every part of Uttarakhand it will be it will be incorrect to say that the presentation being made here is for the entire of Uttarakhand. So it's just about a glimpse maybe. Uh, my name is Tapan Chakravarti. I am a trained architect, urban designer and an educator. I've had the good fortune to spend some time in Uttarakhand on and off uh, trying to figure out or trying to see, firstly uh, enjoy that place but uh, also understand because professionally being an architect, something about the architecture. Before we begin, there were a few things that I would like to sort of mention here. Thank you all for being here today. And thank you for having me here today. This presentation is going to be a screen share of a set of PPT slides, uh, quite a few of them. I thought if I'm talking about architecture or anything related to that, it's more important that you see the pictures and the drawings or the diagrams than you would see me. So the present as a presenter throughout this session, right till the end, including discussions and question answers or whatever, I'll just remain with you vocally, but I will not be visible to you. I'm sure you will not miss much in these days of lockdown with a no barber look. It's uh, better to be behind the scenes than to be, I guess, in front. So please concentrate on the screen itself. Uh, and uh, please hear my whatever I have to sort of speak on the slides. If you find that the voice cracks here and then now and then, uh, please excuse because the Wi-Fi connections nowadays and the bandwidths definitely are not very, very flattering. <laughs> so here goes the first basic slide. I'll start by talking about my own love affair with the hills. I don't know exactly when it happened, but sometime somewhere I did fall in love with hills and its architecture. I probably began my journey from Himachal. I remember my, my master's final year project was in Himachal to do with a city, an old city called Chamba. And then for the next few years, I kept going to Himachal Pradesh with my students. I started teaching a little early in my life. And uh, slowly and gradually, I moved into Uttarakhand, a fantastic place. I guess uh, 
it suited me well i was uh, born and brought up in lucknow genetically i am from bengal and then after finishing my schooling from lucknow i moved to delhi so all my life i was basically a plains person both genetically as well as by habit far away from the hills far away from the sea but uttarakhand at that time was still a part of uttar pradesh so there was some linkage i am not very very fascinated by uh, the sea i am a little worried about uh, water i can't swim and i always felt that maybe it will be easier for me to handle an earthquake than a cyclone and uh, so i was there in the hills uttarakhand being at that time or uttarakhand at that time being part of uttar pradesh they were familiar faces the language was familiar to me and uh, i moved into it but it wasn't something that i did it deliberately i think certain things just happen it's supposed to be i mean i do believe in destiny so i was first uh, my my first encounter with uttarakhand was in 1991 winters we were looking for a place where we could go for a study trip with my students and uh, for some reason we chanced upon jageshwar dham so we had this group of students architecture students they have a mandatory study trip every year in the first 3 years at least so these group of students from school of planning and architecture we landed up in january in the month of january didn't know it will snow most of us didn't even know how to handle snow but when we reached there we found the entire jageshwar dham covered with a blanket white I don't have the all the photographs here with me because uh, of the lockdown. I I have restricted uh, accessibility. But on the right, you I do have a few couple of photographs where you can see students in the middle of the snow. The top right photograph shows a little trek that we had from the lower Jageshwar, that is the Chaurasi area, up to the older or the Vrind Jageshwar. And uh, this is where. my journey into in uttarakhand began my next very next year itself 91 to 92 hardly any gap and destiny pushed me into this uh, contradiction between old and new tiri i went to old tiri because i got engaged in the resettlement scheme planning of the new tiri so the photograph on the left top can see is the old tiri town which is no more visible but i did spend some time in that place the new tiri that you can see lower left it's a photograph that i myself have taken simply because on the left corner is a building where where i have done the major architectural design you've seen those photographs here now on the right the lower three photographs are from that building it's a government iti and the top upper one is of the barwal university which is there at badshahi hall where i had a major role to play i'm putting these photographs out here not because i would like to show that that's the way hill architecture should be in fact my always now when i look back i actually stand there and say well did i do a right thing most of us who were trained architects urban designers or whatever you can call us we had no clue we had no clue what hill architecture was all about and it is that which uh, has bothered me till now even till this day i feel the same uh, uh, sort of angst about us because we get trained about a lot of things but we don't get trained about how a place looks like feels like culturally anyways as i said that this is how i got introduced to this place but what also happened was that between jageshwar and tiri i also understood that uttarakhand is definitely having two major cultural zones or regions most people who are familiar with uttarakhand know that one is called kumaun the other is called garhwal kumaun is slightly la by land a smaller area and garhwal is slightly larger comparatively 
Now, in the beginning, I never thought that there would be much of a difference. They're fine. I mean, you call two different parts for whatever reasons, maybe some historical reasons. But when I started looking at the buildings, not with any deliberate uh, reason, but it slowly and gradually seeped into me that, yes, there is a difference. And today's, in my today's presentation, I will try my level best to bring that little difference in front of you to see how the rural architecture where we see the actual place that's the vernacular of that area how the rural vernacular of the Kumau area and the rural vernacular of Garhwal area though they have similarities but what's distinctly different and you can actually differentiate them it's not a matter that uh, it also depends on which part of the mountain or the hill you are. So the, so the lower reaches have a slightly different way of looking at a building. In the higher reaches, it becomes much more rugged. So when you are further away from cities and the plains, the architecture is much more rugged. And when you are closer to the other plains, cities, there are dooms and many other, UP, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, you find that there is a certain kind, there is a certain finesse in the workmanship. So these regional differences, which I call the regional culture, eventually seeps into the building itself. And I started using this term called culture of building. Culture of building, not just building as a noun, but building also as a verb. The way you build. So the culture of building itself. And that is visible in vernacular architecture, which is since fascinated me and uh, I still sort of try and wade my way through to understand vernacular architecture, especially of the hill areas of the Himalayas. I got a good opportunity again, as I said, destiny, because I went into education and because architecture education mandates that the students must go out of their institutes, city or town and go to other areas to get, basically get some experience or exposure of how architecture is in other parts. So that gave me an opportunity to, be, to participate in study tours as many times as I could and go to these places. And I started going to Uttarakhand very often. That does not mean that I haven't been to other places. I've been to places in Rajasthan, but mostly if you look at it, I did go to Uttarakhand time and again and again and again. Especially when I was in an institute called TBB School of Habitat Studies, where there was a specific program called Related Studies Program, in which students of different classes would come together and go and travel to places which were proposed by their teachers. So when I used to propose trips to Uttarakhand, I would always get a decent group of, uh, you know, first year, second year, third years, fourth years, even fifth years at times. And we could go for a 10, 15 day trip into the hills during the vacations, both winters as well as summers. And that helped me gather a lot of experience of these places. You can see some of the photographs. The students have been working very hard. For them, it's a learning process of how to how to, how to survey an area architecturally, how to document an area architecturally. And that's why I, I write these four few things on the, on the left-hand side of the screen, if you look, that most of these studies, especially in rural areas, this, uh, talk about materials. In a, in a hilly area, it talks about landforms, about construction techniques, how, how the roof has been constructed, how the walls have been constructed, what kind of joinery has happened. We talk about earthquakes, what kind of earthquake measures have been taken up, and we talk about climate, cold, warm, and a lot and lot of documentation. So we make a lot of drawings, and I would like to sort of uh, witness it here. If you look at the three pictures on the left hand side, we're talking a lot about construction, a lot about construction material and earthquake. And I think many of you are familiar with this kind of a construction technique that is followed in the hills, especially in Uttarakhand, 
when we are talking about these katkuna types yes there are other types also like that a g wall construction uh on the right hand side you see the kind of documentation the top right uh drawing well very small here right now it's an entire documented drawing by the students of a full village with which every tree every every uh, 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 you know uh, dwelling unit everything marked good accurately and well the next the middle one you can see very detailed construction drawing how does everything fit together and lastly in the right bottom you would see a monographic publications where we actually showcase these kinds of works it's a lot of dedicated hard work but it's very dedicated academic work i don't know if by the end of it most of our students really get a hang of what building is all about say in this case what uttarakhand is all about they do their work they get get their marks and they move on because next semester they have something else to document something else to do but it does expose them to a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of uh, new uh, ways of looking at buildings but as a teacher perhaps it makes a lot of difference because uh, we are neither making construction drawings nor we are making documentations but we are seeing these things in and out day and day and things happen and you start thinking and you get a lot of things in your mind so what i'll do is that i'll move from here i'll jump directly into what kind of thoughts were there with me and how i evolved and why i mean how how, how i am here today so let's begin with kumau because that's where i started remember jageshwar that was my first thing 1991 and after that i went to jageshwar uh, i mean not just jageshwar but to kumau area a number of times i think it after 91 the next chance that we got was somewhere around 1997 and uh, we were introduced to the kind of uh, kumauni village architecture by a famous uh, author journalist author miss manju kak who has written a book on kumau and its woodwork and architecture so she first introduced us and she led us to a particular village called soni is close to rani khet because we were living there in rani khet and we had a group of students and three or four faculty members who spent about 15 days in that village so what we saw so the top the top left picture and the top right picture is from soni gaon uh the pictures are slightly dull maybe you can't see the details but i think one can get the kind of woodwork that was their mind blowing woodwork which we saw in those 10 15 days we never never even thought that uh, this kind of a, this kind of architecture in the rural areas in our part of the country is actually there it exists but this was a a, a fantastic experience and uh, from that time onwards so somewhere around as i said 19 97 to close to 2007 next 8 10 10 years almost uh time and again i have gone with my students to uttarakhand kumau quite a bit and garhwal as well to be able to just record these absolutely fascinating woodwork what you saw earlier i'll go back what you saw earlier a series of houses series of houses coming one after the other within a village and there are villages where these kinds of series if you look at the left bottom picture a lot of these series a number of series can be there in the same village and all the houses within that series will have this absolutely fascinating woodwork but when we look at houses one by one and this slide shows that they're very interesting houses the kind of doorways the kind of windows that you see some of the details of the doors and windows one can go on and on and the color if you look at the right top corner and the left top corner there's some fascinating colors that are there and even those which haven't made them colorful are still quite bright if you look at the middle pictures the middle left extreme and the middle right extreme they're simple colors but they have done so well 
But the bottom left and the bottom right will also show that there are houses which have not been able to maintain it so well. So things are eroding, colors are not, the colors are fading. And, but that's also primarily because they have not been able to not only maintain the houses, maintain this entire culture of building. Most of these buildings that we found were more than 80 years ago. I think that it can coincided at that point of a time uh, to a little after the border with Tibet getting shut down. So that means that there must be something out there at that time before the before the 60s where a lot of trade was happening and even these villagers had sufficient means to make their houses so elaborate. And it was only after 65 onwards that they were unable to handle the expenses to keep making these kinds of uh, houses for themselves, which may be true, may not be true. Some, some more research perhaps is required, but uh, this is something which is fantastic. The colors and the carvings of the Kumauni architecture. Now here I'm just showing you some drawings that I have prepared after my students uh, uh, completed their documentation. On the left hand side, I'm just putting three random pictures to basically show the just a kind of a visual glimpse of what kind of a frontage of or the facade of these houses were in the villages. At the bottom, I've tried to make a small little diagram of a kind of a sloping roof dwelling unit where you will see a shorter side and you see a longer side. Basically, what happens is that the shorter side does not change its dimensions very much because it completely depends on the size of the wooden tree trunk which uh, they can get in their locality which started i mean it could be it could be chil or it could be devdar but the tree a straight tree trunk of a particular dimension or a width or a diameter which is good for roof and because the species of the tree is the same the length of that wooden piece generally remains the same and as a result the shorter side of the house does not have much scope to become large if the number of people in the household is more. So the way they basically expand is by expanding the longer side. And uh, this expansion can be done in two ways. So if you look at this, just the six drawings that are there, don't worry about all the six. Take either the top three or the bottom three. You'll see that the first drawing basically says, shows alternate walls and voids where the windows and the doorways are. Walls and the doorway is walls and the window and the openings and then walls again. Now, in one way, you can expand this length is by increasing the width of the wall. And the second drawing, the middle drawing, therefore, shows if the extreme two side walls become a little larger and you get the opportunity to make small little windows there, not the major window, the major window still remains the alternate panels, as I said, that is almost like a piano, accordion, keyboard. And the rightmost shows that if the wall, not the extreme walls, but the walls next to the doorway expand. Now, there, there will be houses where all the walls have been expanded. The bottom left photograph shows that. So if you look at them, there is in the center, there is the main doorway. Then there are walls flanking on both sides of the doorway. Then you will find window-like situations where the lower floor has a doorway and the upper floor has a large window, very elaborate. And then the end walls. If the walls are wider, you get these smaller windows. These smaller windows don't compete with the main windows. They are always smaller. And in some extremely interesting situations, some of these windows, these smaller little tiny windows, don't even open. They're not even openable. But somehow they are there. They are... They are aesthetically put there or they are put in some other for, I mean, whatever reasons. But there seems to be a kind of a rhythm in the thought, a sense of order, which is absolutely, absolutely fascinating. So this is one set of pictures where I'm, where I'm putting, where, we, where, where the drawing shows that if the walls are expanded, how do you increase the length of the house? The next picture will basically show the other way around but 
before that let's have a look at the look at the plan of these houses these houses will have a front and the back the lower most drawings are the lower floors it's written there and the middle drawings are the upper floor the lower floor is primarily used for storage of stuff as well as the animals that are there cows and and, uh, and goats uh, so the lower floor is not where the human being stays it's the upper floor where the human beings are there and the rooms actually the rooms are in the rear of the house not the front of the house the front of the house is generally kept open so those 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 fantastic windows that you see are actually abutting a space which is not a room the room is further behind we will come to this later this drawing basically shows that on the second way of expanding the length of the houses where the walls can remain more or less narrow and small, uh, same but it is the void area which starts increasing you expand by increasing the voids and that is how the length of the house changes and from a single window opening you have a double a twin windows which is called a dubari and then you finally have a set of three windows which is a tibari there are just one or two rare cases where i have seen the windows moving beyond tibari that like four or five uh, openings but generally three is uh, one of the i mean the max again this is this is uh, prob uh, i mean according to what i understood depending on the size or the length of the wood that was available which could keep make the horizontal members the top horizontal members of the windows so a tiwari being the longest uh, possible but it also has a very nice proportion so this is how uh, the expansion happens the photographs on the left hand side you will find they do have a little bit of a difference the top photograph is a very simple house where the carvings are kept to minimum the bottom left photograph shows a heavily heavily carved area again from sony the middle one is the one which is on the higher reaches beyond bageshwar and there you find that little rustic quality the carvings have gone away but the concept remains still still remains the same there is that little arch there is the use of color the sense of proportion still is there the little lintel projected over the doorway still exists but now the woodwork carving has reduced and that's why i had used the word rustic so as you go higher and higher and higher into less and less accessible villages you see a kind of rusticness that that comes across again in the same the 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 plan drawing remains very similar except that is said the walls expanding you can see on the upper floor the window openings have become larger so minimal we don't have to get too much into detail of this and uh, the 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 next slide just basically shows variations and something that you see a drawing right in the middle it's a half a house so most of the houses have a doorway in the center with one flank on one side and another flank on the other side but there are some houses which we saw which are this one doorway on one side and the window on one flank the sec the other the reflection flank does not exist you can see that picture at the bottom center you can see a similar picture top center which is a newly constructed building and you can also see that on the right hand side drawing uh, the or the photograph the left edge of the right photograph where a woman is standing on the doorway which is a half a house so it's a kind of a hybridization of an absolute typology being slightly changed nothing more than that we can now move to another which is just a glimpse i'm not going to go into this detail till now we were talking about uh, the rural kumau there are some examples i've got from the urban kumau where you will find that on the left hand side uh the houses are not three stories high in the village you hardly get a house three stories high now somebody might say that how come these are sit i mean are they really urban but they used to be urban because if you look at the names the top photograph comes from top left top left photograph comes from dwara hat the bottom left comes from gangoli hat it's the hat word hat 
which shows that they are much more urbanized because they are basically commercially important settlements rather than agriculturally important settlements only and that is why i see that they have an urban urban uh, you know characteristic about them but these are the completely residential areas but when you come to a non completely commercial you know so residential area like for example the pictures on the right hand side which is the almora bazar almora definitely is a city so almora bazar where you do not get the frontage so you get very narrow houses but they are still linked if you look at the middle photograph there again house after house after house has been linked but the lowermost floor is a shop and then there is a residential unit on the upper or the upper two and uh, once again the characteristics of the woodwork now has become heavier actually on the on these bazaar streets the upper floors are heavily heavily woodworked in fact it doesn't have walls in between the walls are only at the edges and the entire thing is wood and because they were people who were dealing with commerce and commercial activity you can definitely see that the quality of the woodwork is uh, is is definitely much more and uh, some of the colorful ones are also interesting if you see the uh, bottom right corner most picture but just a glimpse of the urban areas uh, something which uh, we are going to probably lose very fast because uh, I've seen Almora Bazaar changing now. So we move to Garhwal. Dehradun is part of Garhwal. So Garhwal is one place uh, which also has its own little character. But I I hope you have remembered the kind of pictures you have seen in Kumau. And now what we will see in Garhwal, maybe you will see that what kind of similarities or dissimilarities which are there. So my first. my first foray into garhwal other than the new tihri town work that i was doing more as a practicing architect but as an academic architect the first place that i landed up was in mukhba mukhba beyond uttarkashi and just a little before gangotri mukhba the winter abode of ganga ma uh, the ganga deities are brought to mukhba from gangotri during the winter months because gangotri all becomes nearly uninhabitable when i first went there way back in 1992 93 as we were going to new tiri one day we just took an excursion out wanted to go to gangotri but got stuck here the kind of uh, pictures and you can see those pictures slightly faded uh, not really getting the colors correct but uh, and the and the and the village was uh, not very heavily populated it was semi abandoned just few people were around most of the houses were closed there was a kind of a deserted abandoned look about it but uh, i went back with my students in 1998 because this place was so fascinating that one couldn't help going there and documenting this place these are the photographs from 1998 slightly better more color but my god i had never seen so much of wood quantity of unadulterated wood i call it unadulterated because due to lack of maintenance the paint etc has probably peeled off but what you see there is just wood wood and wood for people like us from plains this was mind boggling the entire facades of the houses look at the left top corner the entire three story facade is just solid wood look at the columns you will see the columns just look at the right bottom corner photograph and its bottom corner right bottom corner there is a small little column which is there in that picture that column the width of that column is probably as wide as me it's like a human sized trunk of a tree one solid piece if you look at the picture just above that the middle picture is in fact both sides left and right the roof they don't have snow uh, uh, stone tiles or anything they are planks of wood there's so much of wood this wood everywhere it was delicious 
so mukwa was my first uh, 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 you know for into garhwal then we did come down i went to chamba you have uh, the photographs here on the left top corner and the right bottom corner are from mana the last village before the uh, border with tibet china so from dehradun to chamma chamma khal while on the way to new jeri right from there right up to mana and there mukba you see these kinds of uh, places we have been to these villages the you can see some of the pictures have our students sitting down and making drawings taking measurements documenting them but here i think i would also like you to have a look that though there are carvings they're slightly lesser than that of kumau but the front face or the facade of these dwelling units looks slightly different it doesn't have that alternate wall and then a void and a wall and another void and a wall it's like the different as we go and make the drawings you see the top three drawings which are the elevations you'll find that the walls are there on the extreme two ends of the dwelling unit or the house and in the middle on the upper floor there seems to be a series of columns colonnades sometimes arches and it's open it's a very veranda ish and as you increase the size of the house you basically have instead of three or four arches you probably have four or five or six arches somewhere i have a photograph where there are some 10 or 12 arches one after the other it was a very long 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 house i didn't get a good picture of that so i ha- I, i haven't put it here but uh, you you have a staircase which is outside the house unlike in uh, unlike in kumau where part of the staircase is inside the house here the entire steps they are very steep steps and you directly go on top but once again the lower floor is basically stores storage and a place where the animals can be sheltered and is the upper floor where you have the rooms and the rooms again are at the rear of the house so this is what i would call garhwal so now i'm going to take a few slides to basically deal with garhwal and kumau together uh differences and similarities i will not always say comparisons but yeah differences and similarities they may be a little random but something which might interest all of you kumau typology on the top if you see the left side top picture garhwal typology is the bottom left side picture and you can see the various the kind of difference and the kind of drawings that i have made the upper two drawings are the kumauni front uh, face of the of the of the houses and the bottom is the garhwali uh, houses and their front face so this is the kind of differences which are there what is interesting is the rooms being at the rear of the house this front area is actually the veranda now in garhwali architecture the veranda is absolutely clear it's demarcated the pale yellow i i hope you can see the color on the screen the pale yellow bottom plan bottom three stock uh, sort of drawings are basically the garhwali thing in front in the middle you have this place where people can sit and do their work and the sun comes in on the other hand in the kumauni architecture the reason why there are these large windows maybe one or two or even three is basically the space right behind it is actually used like a veranda people just sit there on the floor do things all kinds of things multi purpose this is not a area where people actually store their uh, goods or uh, you know clothes or their beds nothing this is a free fall area where the children can be there where elders can be there at different parts uh, different times of the day or the evening or the morning but both of them so what i have never been able to understand fully i'm sure there are answers but uh, whenever i've asked the local people there they said hum to aisa hi banate hain this is how it is that but why what i wanted to understand was that uh, why is the garhwal areas uh, uh, this veranda space is so so much more open and exposed to the environment and while in the kumau area this is not so open not so directly linked with the outside so there is a there is a connection but that connection has Uh, a control you can actually shut those windows because there are there are shutters there 
while there are no shutters principally in this garhwali uh, uh, you know form so but my problem was that when i used to go to kumau and ask ki aapka makan garhwal se different kya hai they won't understand garhwal se different hai ki nahi when if i said aap aisa kyu banate hain so hum to ji aise hi banate hain the same thing happened with garhwal they don't know how the kumau architecture is because they don't understand they don't they, they, they don't they don't study that like i coming from a completely as an outsider i'm studying them we are not studying them they simply say that garhwal mein to hum aise hi banate hain so i could never really get a clear answer from the users of the house why they are different but there is a difference and i'm sure that has got to do with both climatic and social issues there is a high possibility it has got to do with some sense of security and some sense of probably the way the sun and probably the wind moves so i think uh, there will be answers there i still haven't got those answers i'm sure there might be people uh, right now in the, in in this in this group today who will have the answers and if somebody has it will be fantastic if they can share uh, those thoughts with us the other thing that i found interesting while i was uh, working in in garhwal was also that now if you look at the look at the little diagram that i have drawn at the bottom you have seen this diagram before shorter side and the longer side the shorter side which is got a triangular top is also called the gable end and the longer side which has got the slope or the gutter of the sloping roof is that 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 edge of the sloping roof is called the eaves end so i call it the eaves side and the gable side now what i found was that most of the dwelling units or houses that we find in rural areas in entire uttarakhand primarily have their openings in the longer side or the eaves end the left picture in the middle the left side picture is a typical picture you enter from that side there are hardly many examples where you enter in the gable side which is the shorter side now if you see one house on the right photograph the slightly yellowish colored house they do have openings there but that opening is still not the main door it's a side door it's a side window the veranda on the side and it's it's, it's the side of the house it's not really the front of the house but on the other hand the picture in the middle which is a circuit house if you actually understand the plan it has got walls on the two ends and a lot a large veranda kind of a colonnaded veranda in the middle very like the garhwali house and yet the center place where you actually enter the roof has been folded and a gable like situation has been created so somewhere it comes to my mind that there is a possibility that there is some kind of a european influence here now we go back to some of these pictures the top two pictures left and the right extreme are from mukwa and the bottom two are from mana the bottom right is a now a locked up house which is uh, the mana check post so before they would cross over to tibet you had to basically register yourself in this mana check post what is fascinating in that village mana was that there was an in- exact replica of that house left bottom corner but more vernacular so there was this influence which is visible and uh, so this gable end entry this gable end being the front facade the front front edge of the house is there in garhwal in many places but i have a doubt if this got incorporated or influenced by western or our colonial friends who were there earlier and not only this gable end this gable also has a projected veranda so if you look at my diagram i put a little dark blue or a kind of a purplish little flat projecting out of the gable you will see this veranda remember this veranda it has now come across earlier why i am why i am pointing this out is because if you remember the 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 the, the vernacular garhwali house and the vernacular kumauni house the veranda was within the building it was part and parcel of the inside but here you start seeing that the veranda is now coming outside it is a stuck on projected piece so the main building remains the main load bearing walls are behind and something now projects out 
of the gable thing this is also what is happening in some of the, and this is a later edition it is actually a much more common feature in himachal but not in kumaon <coughs> so my last set set of, uh, 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 sort of uh, you know slides is got to do something which i show as many times as i can is to do with transformation evolution and change i don't know if i should say transformation and evolution and change or i should say transformation or evolution or change transformation is something that we as a architects use it's a kind of a thing which sort of morphs and transforms through time and architectural uh, style evolution is something which improves and becomes better with time change can be just a change something moves out and something comes in the the picture that i have here is from mukhba where i'm very lucky to have three stages of mukhba houses or construction in one shot the farthest picture is the old one where there was a lot of wood as i said unadulterated wood the middle picture is slightly yellowish looking you see a projected uh, a projected balcony and the wood has become thinner it has become more of a lighter construction systems and there is a roof which is probably metal and then the most front one is a completely set cast in situ rcc structure coming up we still don't know what is going to be uh, because just the columns are there and the so the walls you don't need the walls the walls are like a filler so this is what happens this is a picture from mana and you can see that uh, there is this earlier the earliest is the timber slat roofing then comes the slate tile roofing eventually you will see the gi sheet that is the galvanized iron corrugated sheet roofing and of course the rcc slab roofing which is now the in thing now, should the rcc slab be flat generally it is flat but if you remember some of the pictures that i had shown you from new theory we had tried to make sloping roofs very gentle slopes but sloping roofs with rcc but in the villages i have not seen sloping roofs with rcc very much until now unless they are constructing something like a temple so even in mukwa the new ganga ji ka temple is made out of concrete and definitely doesn't have a uh, flat roof does does have a shikhar a kind of a thing on top very disproportionate but it is there the next side is something again which i am which i show to a lot of people it's very close to my heart i don't know i feel very bad about it the two right pictures the top and the bottom is from the same place chageshwar first time when i went there in 1991 i took that photograph you can see some snow there no i told you that i i reached there when it was snowing and later on 10 years later 2001 or something around that time 2001 2005 it is the same place you can understand it is the same photograph because the right hand side house still remains the same in both the pictures it is the middle and the left which was actually incredibly vernacular wood typical kumauni jageshwari architecture has now given way to what is called modern and here again you will see what has happened to the veranda the veranda in the middle has become like any plain house where from the driveway you have a small little so called veranda to step up to and in the left one you see a projection which is there so this is what has happened to and this is what is happening around in the hills i'll show you some more pictures if you look at it so the top left picture is what i say is that somebody has replaced so an older house was simply pulled down and a newer house has come and that's the way it looks like the the bottom one is like a renouncing where the left house the left pick the left blue doors and windows that house is there but is no more used so this uh, pinkish colored house has been now built so the people have moved into this new house for some reason but they have not been able to break down the older house sentiment emotional or maybe the elderly in the house are still there and they say khabardar usko nahi todna so it is still there but nobody actually uses it the middle one is a very interesting one if you see the picture that the older house you rip off the sloping roof you put a flat rcc slab 
simply because you can make a floor on top and once again it is the projected balcony on the veranda so these are the changes which are which are happening so therefore i put that question mark in front of transformation evolution or change i don't have an answer i really don't know is it transformation is it evolution or is it change uh, but these are there these are things which one can note this is from jageshwar and here you can see the the center picture is the entire thing the left part of the center picture is blown up on the top and the right part of the center picture is blown up on the right and you can see that in both the cases the uppermost and the lowermost picture the right hand sides of it are the older houses and the left side of it are the newer houses and it is again the right side has a projected veranda the left that is the top you see that the windows on top has changed they are still lockable but uh, the look and feel of it has altered and the veranda at the lower floor is the one that has become like a cave and uh, so the, so these, these are the changes which are happening and that is the it's when you look at these elements i think then only we understand what the change is happening otherwise he simply says that are pehle aisa tha aur baad mein aisa hai but wo aisa jo hai wo kaisa hai i think that is something if we start uh, understanding and knowing we might be in a better position to be able to incorporate uh things with us now here is something that i would like this is my last slide is that some of these older houses have also incorporated new things the left picture on the left bottom is actually from a village but it's a village close to a urban settlement and if you notice carefully the upper side the windows have actually changed they have removed those old wooden carved ones but the the, the proportion remains the same there is a railing which is there at the bottom and the and the and the shutters have now glass in it it's a very well kept also very well maintained and i think that's a very interesting move that has happened with time the right picture is another fascinating it's from almoda bazar i think this this building was two stories high once upon a time now when they wanted to increase the height not to they had to change the height of the middle floor that is the first floor and therefore they removed the windows and then they moved it to the upper floor which has a sloping roof so the sloping roof generally at the edge is slightly lower it's not a very high roof it's because it's it becomes high in the middle because as the roof slopes but a flat roof like an rcc slab has the same height throughout in the middle and at the edge so because of the edge being higher that window somehow doesn't sit i think to the sensibilities of the owner so the owner removed those windows from the first floor the older first floor and took them above the upper the newer second floor and still maintained so some connections are probably still visible and this is a very fascinating house i couldn't take the picture of the entire house in one go because there was no space to go back and i didn't have a very good camera at that time this is from almora it's a three story so therefore you can see that it's an urban house and all the windows the 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 shutters have now become glass and it's a modernized house it's a it's a modern house from inside and a traditional house from outside or some kind of a nice uh, sort of mix uh, which has happened and the proud owner stood in front of the doorway and says aap picture le sakte hain and uh, we went there with some reference with somebody uh, i was there with uh, with some persons from the undp while i was working uh, in the in the in the in the garhwal area and this i found was fascinating so so the so the older facades are not really outdated they can remain they can stay the carving look at the center picture all the glass panes and yet the carvings are there it's fascinating the lower most floor which would have been otherwise a storage and a place where animals would be put is actually a nice sit out it's a it's a it's a lounging area people sit there because the weather and the temperature is 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 so nice so that's where i end because i think that yes everything is not lost there is uh, there is positivity out there so there it is good time for us to have a conversation
you can call it question and answers uh, thank you for your patience please uh, let's have your questions coming up uh, it will probably have to happen through the chat box because i will not be able to hear you so if there are anything that you would like to share let me scroll down Lokeshji had said, "Okay, okay. So everything is loud and clear. So I'm scrolling down." Chhabi Ma'am says that the voice has been breaking. I did say that uh, there might have been problems because I am actually working from uh, the hotspot because my Wi-Fi is, uh, you know, not, uh, not, not, not working very, very consistently. So message said broadcast stream is on right on my phone. <clears throat> there is one question here from Akshay Agarwal saying, please explain earthquake resistance capabilities of these houses and the techniques used. Well, frankly speaking, this particular presentation was not supposed to be only for that. I mean, not focusing on that, but. Yes, uh, I think I think basically what happens is that there, let me let me look at it from from another point of view. The modern way of civil engineering, which is which is their part of our architecture, the modern way of civil engineering is basically to do to resist earthquake. So we try to make our houses stronger than the earthquake. So if 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 we generally find that in an area the historically the earthquakes were uh, within five richer scale we would like to make a building which can withstand six and a half and then one day the, the earthquake comes at seven and the building comes down so we should try to make it a little more so we say okay why not eight or nine but i think earlier these things were not so earlier the construction was not to strengthen the building but being able to allow the building to take the vibration of the earthquake in fact, something very fascinating happened in Mukba. In 1991, when I first went to Mukba, and I was loitering around in that village, I actually chanced upon a house, three-story house, which was slightly tilted. So I was standing in front and, you know, smiling. And when one of the villagers came and said, What are you doing? I said, This is a tilted house. He said, Yes, a few years ago, there was an earthquake. It was a little bit of a tilted house. But it's staying there. It hasn't collapsed. People are living there. So in, in, in 1998, when I took my students to Mukwa, I very proudly said, Chalo, chalo, tumhe Tower of Pisa yahi dikhate. And we had this, uh, you know, uh, 15, 20 students with me and my fellow faculty members. And I went around the village looking for that Tera house and I couldn't get it. So I was, but I had a rough idea of the location. So I just roamed there and then some people said, Aap kuch dhoon rahe kya? Humne kaya, I came here a few years ago and there was a building, a place where it was a tela. So I said, you stand in front of it. I said, no, this is not a tela. No, the earthquake of Harsil, the Uttarkashi Harsil, two or three years ago, that building was straight away. So I think that's what is fantastic because most of these vernacular architectural forms, including older, not only in India, I think in China, in Japan, they allow the building to move, move with the vibration and thereby able to allow the building to take the vibration rather than try to muscle it and resist it and finally fall. So if we are able to be in sync or be friendly with earthquake and that's what vernacular architecture actually shows. So I think that is, uh, I hope, uh, uh, though it may not be the 100% answer, but I basically said that that is what I meant. So, Akshay. Uh, so, thank you and very, very nice information, Chabi. Thank you very much for liking it. So, Meghna Chatterjee, sir, in the house shown in the last slide, how and where have they incorporated the toilet? No, it's a large house. So, some of the smaller rooms have been. Because it's not, as, as I said, that these, they don't have very complex plans. They're very simple, simple plans. The layout of the houses are very simple. I, I didn't go inside the house because we were not looking at the, trying to document that house. But they have, I've asked the owner that you have your toilets, etc. Well, yeah, most of our floors have a toilet, but we have tried to maintain that 
the top most floor probably doesn't have a toilet the toilets are generally on the on the ground floor but i think on the first floor they have been able to manage plus the rear of the house is uh, the second floor is actually touching the ground because as you see in the hills it's not a flat land so the ground floor the lower most floor has a ground even the middle floor has a ground behind so it's easy for them to sort of create a extension or even try to take the take the pipes out for disposal so they have that at the rear of the building so which is which is which is there uh sana we will be uploading this session on your youtube channel as well you can catch up there yeah i hope the talk will be available later sir will this hybridization or transformation hemant singh bish transformation of our vernacular architecture and housing have adverse effects physically or culturally i do not know because i am not a person who would like to give judgments i'm just saying that i cannot tell people in the hills that hey please don't make newer houses but what i'm saying is that people who are what we need to know through our education not only architects but even in schools how do we start appreciating things so i think that what we have lost is that we have not been able to appreciate and therefore koi bhi kuch bhi bada deta hai ya kuch bhi kar leta hai और कह देता है और हम जाके शहर से एक पूरा का प्रोटोटाइप एक घर बना के यहाँ पर ले आते हैं बगैर सोचे बट इफ यू लुक एट अर्लियर हाउसेस दे दे वो सम सेंस आई मीन इफ यू द रीजन व्हाई आई ट्राई टू शो द कार्विंग्स एंड ऑल दैट दिस सीम्स टू बी अ सर्टेन 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 लाइक लाइकिंग फॉर ऑर्डर रिदम लुक or an overall feeling of aesthetics i think somewhere in our newer education we have lost that understanding of uh, aesthetics just like we have lost the understanding of ethics so we don't have an ethical relationship with the with the with the jungle which the old earlier people had not because somebody had taught them but they felt so but i think that we have we have uh, we have uh, you know tampered with our feelings so i think that is something which we can definitely Uh, look into that's what my uh, thing was i would not be able to say does it have an adverse effect or not as of now uh, how would you build the new tiri buildings if we were to do it now lokesh i mean lokesh ji that will take that will take another uh, you know one hour because there are a lot of things yes it will probably be different i don't know exactly but i think that today i am better equipped to think right for the uh, for the at least the garhwal and kumaon hills i can't say the same for uh, you know uh, manipur hills or uh, you know the hills of uh, kashmir but for garhwal and kumaon i seen that i think that i have a better feel of the things and at that point of a time when i was working there in 91 92 93 i didn't have that feel so that feel would have probably Uh, would make some difference i would not be in a position to say what exactly will be the difference but i think it would have an impact um, what can we learn regarding material or planning in present context akshay ji this will take a long time so i will i will leave that uh, my 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 email is there on the slide which is still on you can always put up a question and we can have a discussion gagan sepian uh that was profound wonderful tera house absorbing the earthquake thank you yeah it was uh, it was amusing how would you build the new tiri building if you were to do it now i answered meghna chatterjee thank you another question is what according to you is a suitable way forward for building in these areas given the lack of availability of the local materials such as timber and stone now this uh, meghna ji is a very very uh, very very important kind of a question in the sense that uh, <coughs> see materials will change i it will be wrong of me to say that uh, materials will never change i'm sure even in the hills these these woodwork and the stone work that you see if i go back a thousand years before i I'm, i'm quite sure uh, the stone would not be uh, handled in such a way or the timber might be different i mean very simple thing some of the houses which were more than 100 years old had woodwork done in a wood which was called the tun the tree tun now tun today is hardly there in the in the in the hills it's, it's it's almost like an extinct species but later on the houses which were 80 years old or 60 years old they were using chiel for the same window they were carving it the same way as they carved tun it's a different matter that uh, 
uh, seed has this lisa which comes out and slowly eats away or you know um, you know mixes with the carving and the depth of the carving starts vanishing or it starts crumbling the front the the, the carved surfaces uh, do not remain the same while the tomb carvings even after 100 years were visible materials will change i think that we have to basically understand that just because the plains people needed wood and therefore they started damaging the the hills uh, the forests of the hills it's unfair that the people of the hills are deprived of their wood so i think it needs some kind of a management rather than these legal processes ki ya to ped kaatenge ya to nahi kaatenge matlab this this either or situation this black and white doesn't work and i think that new new things can happen i mean i don't understand why if i have if i have to replace a a a, a wooden rafter of a sloping roof can i replace it with a concrete or a steel or even a fiber glass rafter rather than saying ki pura chhati ughad do pura ka pura rcc se banao rcc does not have rafters battens nothing the earlier system of construction was by assembly people used to assemble an element 1 element 2 element 3 and bravo the house is made today you have a cast you 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 make a form work with shuttering and you pour concrete concrete is not a solid material in the beginning it's a fluid material you pour it like you pour pour a molten gold or you pour bronze or whatever or plaster of paris and then when it dries off it becomes so the construction system is different we have to basically understand it's not the material materials can come and go materials can change material is with technology even the tools will change but there is a sense of a sense of aesthetic that comes from a cultural regional environmental i mean food roti sab jagah ki alag hoti hai lekin taste mein farak hota hai dal dal mujhko gujarat mein bhi milta hai dal uttar pradesh mein bhi milta hai aur dal kumaon aur garhwal mein bhi milta hai lekin dal ke taste mein farak hota hai banane ke tarike mein farak hota hai consistency mein farak hota hai and you can make that difference so i think that it is that which we need to capture we need to capture what was the what was the difference what what made garhwal garhwal and what and you can see it is not even uttarakhand versus uttar pradesh even within uttarakhand you are having a very significant difference in the look and feel but if you look at the plan drawings it still has two rooms each and two spaces in front but when you look at the building to look in carefully it's some same thing human beings are the same we have the same eyes nose everything but a ladakhi person looks different from a malayali person so they are they are still human beings but there is a cultural and the regional uh, mark that is there i think these are the things which we need to need to probably um, you know start recognizing and i think that that's where education should be coming up it's not just a question of putting things here rajeshri chakravarti do you find a major similarity in the hill architecture across india well, she i haven't been traveling all across uh, i wish i could but i think uh, i don't i can't really i mean himalayas is, is huge so from 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 agartala to uh, shrinagar it's a long way i have been able to see something in uttarakhand and i feel myself very lucky i do have some bit of uh, clarity about himachal and some glimpses glimpses of kashmir but i have no clarity of what happens on the eastern end or towards the eastern side of nepal so i have no idea about darjeeling hills i have no idea about assam and further so i think that uh, i will not be in a position to answer that question i am sure there will be dissimilarities as far as regions are concerned but there will be similarities as far as hill versus desert architecture is concerned so i'm sure hill and mountainous architecture does have certain things similar which is different from what coastal architecture would be or desert architecture would be so i think that those kinds of differences are definitely there but i will not be able to identify all of them chabi any comment on how site sensitive these houses were were they built with sensitivity to the existing site conditions yes chabi ji because the point is that they probably didn't have an option they were look they they were they were in the in the rural areas where you don't have these heavy machinery 
to come and do all kinds of funny things to the ground. And I think that it is not also they wouldn't do that because they live with these uh, undulated landscape, ups and downs. I mean, I I would never be able to run down a, 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 a hilly or a mountainous path wearing Hawaii chappals at the speed what which the locals do. I will never be able to do that. So they, they I think, they relate with the ground conditions, the topography, the site, whatever. They relate with it much more personally. And therefore, when they build their houses, unlike having an architect coming from somewhere else, like I went from Delhi to build in New Delhi, right? I was not relating myself to the land. I was not relating myself to anything. I was looking, I was just, I was just trying to solve the issues of, you know, levels of the ground, contour map. Yay. I was trying to resolve uh, by calculation, arithmetically, mathematically, and try to put it that into a geometry. But what they were doing is that they were molding their house according to the land, which is a which is a the kind of difference that we have in architecture. That uh, I mean, when I used to teach history of architecture and history of urban settlements, there's a there's something called geomorphic and geometric. So I think the modern architecture is all about geometry, the measure of the land, while the earlier architecture was much more geomorphic. It used to morph itself with the ground. It used to mold itself with the ground. And I think that's how I think I think most of these houses I saw did well and they sort of responded. I would say they didn't solve things. They responded to the ground conditions pretty well, including uh, how to take out rainwater, how to take out trapped water. These are the, not the houses which were blown away simply because of, you know, some rain has happened. Well, you can't, you can't survive a catastrophe like a landslide. But uh, in the normal uh, monsoon or rains, things will not. So I think that they, they, they do understand. And there's a certain kind of a stepped way of, poor, you know, sort of disposing water. The kind of uh, rooms that they do, they are not worried about staircases and steps and staircases. They are they're pretty familiar. Uh, I mean, we, at least I, as a plains person, my knees are not going to be as uh, flexible as a hill person's is. So there it is. I think that uh, we can spend another hour discussing, but I think that it, we are coming close to 7.15. We have overshot our time. So I would like to uh, thank you all once again. And... Uh, uh, like to sort of uh, close the session now. I'm going to end the live video. So thank you very much and uh, have a great day and have a great coming weekend and stay safe. Thank you.